we really got to, the opportunity to tell her side of the story and, and give her her sense of agency, so it was, it was amazing. I got left out of a talent show. Yeah, I learned very early on about um, rejection. Well, we were, it was a school talent show and we were doing Dance from Chicago. So you can imagine, very big deal when you're 14. I'd gone on holiday with my parents and I was on MSN. And they were like, look, you can't be in the dance because you've not been here to practice. So I was absolutely devastated. And um, in Liverpool, we had this thing called the Liverpool Drama Festival, where each person who entered would perform a monologue. And my mum was like, well, you know, go and ask your drama teacher if you can do your monologue. So I was like, OK. I did, and then she kind of spotted me. And from that, she sent me for a BBC radio play, which was my first ever professional acting job. I think what I look for in a part is a challenge. I really like to mix it up, you know, try and do something different from what I've previously done. I also, you know, look out for the writers and the cast who I could be possibly working alongside. Um, same with directors, just people who I, who I would like to work with. And yeah, just something different in each role is my biggest, my biggest aim, I would say. So yeah, it was from doing the radio play that um, the other like professional actors were like, you know, if you like enjoy this so much, you can you can give it a go at like doing it all the time. And a lady kindly introduced me to an agent, and it's just kind of snowballed from there. But I'm sure my friends, every time they hear me <laughs> tell this story, they're like, we just get over it. We just let it go, the grudge go of being left out. But I think it's very funny, you know, like how, how, how things turn out. Because my mum is always like, if they didn't leave you out, what would you be doing? I enjoy going into a, a costume room and then just being rails and rails of deliciously expensive designer clothes. But I keep my eye on for the costume sale. But I honestly, I kind of love just giving them the reins to, to have fun with it. And then for me, it's all about trying it on. And a big thing for Villanelle is, yes, it's fashion, but it's got to be comfortable. It's got to be practical. Um, you know, and I remember you know, talking to Phoebe early on, it's like, she's not gonna scale the wall in six inch heels. Like, okay, that's a, it happens in Hollywood, but it's not gonna happen here, you know? What would she be wearing so that she can do what she needs to do? I can give you no hints, I'm sworn to secrecy. Although, um, we have a new um, writer, Susanna Heathcote, so, who is fabulous, and, you know, we still have the same tone of the show and, and everything that the show stands for, but, there's a lot of craziness going on. But yeah, I hope that the, the viewers enjoy it. You know, we're trying to stay true to the characters and their development and um, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it, as in terms of filming it, it isn't that much different, but, um, and it's funny because now that the show's out, I, I mean, I see a lot of, tw on Twitter, you know, I get really lovely messages off people and I see reviews and stuff, which is amazing, but I don't see the, you know, all the buzz of it, like I would if it was on, you know, at home. But I think obviously the audience is just so much huger, which is is different. In terms of, of making the show, there wasn't wasn't an awful lot of, of difference, I would say. But it will be going to um, BBC One late, um, later this year. So. The best part was getting a new episode through and I was just thinking, what on earth has Phoebe Waller-Bridge got me doing now? But it was always just something so bizarre and random, which again, which I think keeps the show quite fresh because it's not what you expect. I think preparing for a role varies depending on the part. Like I've just finished a big period drama, so there was a lot of research that went into the history. Um, with 13, I researched, you know, stories of victims who'd been kidnapped. So it, I think it depends on, on the project. But I do kind of leave a lot to the day. I kind of believe a lot that happens in the moment. I think you can only do so much and then you've got to just let it be and, and yeah. Always, you know, yeah. we, we have a different director every block as well, which is also an adjustment, but I think it, it keeps things fresh and, you know, you adapt and you learn and it's a, you know, it's a huge part of the job that I enjoy. It's really hard. And honestly, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I rely so much on the writers for that. Like, I, I, I feel like I always come back each season with an idea of what I don't want. And then <laughs> I like to see what they run with. 
and what they create because I for me that's what is really enjoyable about this whole process is you know a lot of times you you, you finish a season and you're like where are we going to go from here and then lo and behold you know there is eight episodes of wonderfulness that that they that they come up with